Hello everyone. Let's go through assignment number 11. So in this assignment we are practicing how to convert matrices to graphs and vice versa. But as you know we have two different matrices that we are dealing with. Adjacent one and also incident one. So here we have given adjacent matrices. Now one by one we are trying to draw the graphs. The thing we should notice from the beginning is that whether we have loops or not. And also just specify the vertices. Okay, so we can label them as ABC from both rows and columns. As you know, for adjacent matrices, both of rows and columns are related to your vertices. So you notice that we have loops. And the second thing we should check is whether this is a direct or undirected graph. It is true that if you show, for example, these two vertices and this edge between them, and also you have these two vertices and you show a directed graph like this. These two graphs are equivalent, of course, but if you are showing adjacent matrices and this is symmetric, it means that the transpose is the same as the matrix itself. Then in this case, don't draw the directed graph. If you do it, for example, in the final exam, you will uh, have negative points. So avoid provide a directed graph for a matrix which is symmetric. So you should have a un, uh, undirected graph for sure for that. So there are two things we should be careful about from the beginning. Whether this is a pseudo graph, it is because it has loops and also if it is symmetric. If it is then provide undirected graph. So you check here, these two are the same, these two are the same, these two are the same. This is a undirected graph. So the next thing to do is to show the vertices. So A, B, C. I have three vertices. The next thing to do is to show the edges, starting from the loops. So A to A is connected, C to C is connected, but there is no loop for B. Okay, now whatever you have except the diagonal one. Here you have AC. So AC is connected and CA is also connected. This is an undirected graph. That's good enough to show like this. And what else do we have for BC? BC also are connected and that's it. That would be the graph for part A. So again, I just emphasize on this that you should be careful about drawing directed or undirected graph and you can uh, know it from the beginning. Now for the item B. Again, you will see that they have loops and you have numbers more than one. It means that this is a multigraph. This is not just a simple graph. What about its symmetric? This is not symmetric, you see? Two, zero. This is not symmetric. Just one counterexample is good enough to say that you will have a directed graph. So, uh, by drawing it, as I said, First, consider the vertices. So you will have again three vertices, A, B, C. The label doesn't matter, but you should just name it yourself. So if it is not named like this, you should uh, name it yourself. Then based on that, we can uh, convert. So first, the loops. Here, this is a directed graph. Of course, this is a loop that uh, if I show the arrow here or here, doesn't matter. 
but this is a directed graph you should show the arrow anyway okay be careful about this in the exam as well for C also you have two of them one two again show the arrow doesn't matter that this is a loop or not of course their meaning is the same but uh, we should follow the standard for converting matrices to graphs. Okay, now we have already dealt with diagonal part. When we are dealing with directed graph, start it one by one for each element which are not on diagonal. Of course, if you say, if I started from the beginning, not even considering it is a diagonal or not, again, you will reach the same graph. It depends on you. But in this way, you are checking your graph all the time because uh, students tend to have some errors. This is uh, very easy, obviously, but it needs a little bit concentration. Unfortunately, for our final exam, you have time as much as uh, provided, and it is long. So you have time to not to rush it and double check your solution. OK, so for A to B, a to B, I have two of them. So A to B, I have two of them. A to C, I have one of them. So the arrow should be A to C, not C to A. So from my row, I understand what's my initial point, OK? Now for B to A, I have two of them. Again, from B to A, I have two of them. So you see, if you consider it as an undirected graph, it's a mistake because these two, uh, maybe someone show me like this. And you say, OK, this is an undirected graph, so that's it. Uh, of course, if we specify in the question, uh, that you can draw it for both, for example, directed and indirected one, then this would make sense. But as I want you guys to uh, know for the final exam, whenever I provide you adjacent matrices, there should be either directed or undirected. So this one, for example, would be false. If you say, for example, in other courses, that's the case, I understand this is actually true. But this is what I want you uh, to evaluate you in the final exam. So also understand who uh, watches the videos and who doesn't. So be careful about these things. For B to C, we don't have any edge. We move on also for C to A. But again, for C to A, I see two arcs. So from here to A, I will have two edges and consider the direction so that this will be a directed uh, graph. OK, so it will be the second graph. Let's move on to the last one. So now we are dealing with four vertices not just three. Again, you can see that this is the diagonal. We have loops. This is a pseudograph. You see even just one ca uh, counter example. This is just good enough to say that this is a directed graph. OK, now we have four vertices. Uh, you name them A, B, C, D. So it's very important to specify the title of these vertices because if I change the title of A to D, then you will have a different shape, but the graph is exactly the same. So uh, these things we should be careful about to uh, always write the titles. This is obvious. Okay, for the loops, you can see that uh, for A, we don't have a loop. For B, we have two of them. So you have two of them and show the direction. 
for C, I have only one of them. So, one. For D, I have two of them. So, here I will have two loops for this. All right, now one by one. For From A to B, I have two. I have two. Show the direction. This is a directed graph. So A to C, I have three of them. And I think that you got the idea. It's not necessary for me to do the rest. But anyway, let's practice it uh, because this is the last adjacent matrix anyway. And from A to D, we don't have any edges. From B to C, we have two. B to C, we have two of them. And you see these things uh, sound very simple, and they are. But the problem is the errors that time to time we may make. And even since I'm talking at the same time, I'm drawing, maybe I don't have a concentration that I should have. That's why practicing with these things are very important, and also for your exam. You should be careful about them so that there won't be not a single mistake in them. And that's the uh, challenge for graphs, usually. For those who also took bioinformatics from me, they, I showed them about uh, Petronets. So these things, when they are getting very complicated, it, need, it demands concentration. And for each of them, they are meaningful to come up with such a matrix and how to convert it into graphs. OK, for B to D, again, we have an arc here. So B to D, we have one. OK, C to A, we have two of them. So C to A, we, I have only, no, I have two of them. OK, I have two of them. And also, uh, when you get experience with the graphs, you know how to draw them better. By just looking at the metrics, you understand to avoid the mess, to have some tricks to, for example, put maybe A to B closer to each other to have a better shape, something like that, or A to C far from each other to have better shape for our graph. This is also uh, important, and it needs experience. But for the final exam, we are not uh, concerned about those things anyway. C to B, I have one of them. C to B, I have one edge. Uh, C to D, I don't have. And D to A. And D to A, again, I will have one edge, and that's it. So as I said, uh, it's better not to consider uh, undirected one inside the directed graph just for this final exam. Uh, of course, uh, in our practical problems in the future you will face, you can apply those things, and th this is correct. But for the final exam, uh, please exactly follow the instructions as I tell you in this lecture and for those who, are, who will watch the video. OK, so it was enough, I think, for converting adjacent metrics to a graph. Now let's practice the vice versa case. Like, if you have the graph, you want to just construct the metrics. This is the adjacent metrics we are talking about. So in the final exam, I should exactly specify, I want you to construct the adjacent metrics. If I say incident, I can give you exactly the same shape. You should be the one to label them to say, for example, this is edge one and so on, and you will construct. But now we are talking about adjacent one. So for adjacent, the first thing we should notice is that all the rows and columns they have the same they have uh, the same vertices. We are, we don't talk about edges. So now I have four by four metrics. A B C, D. Okay. 
Now, I take a look at my graph and I don't see any loop. This is not a pseudograph. So right away for diagonal, all of them are zero. That's why I'm telling you it's better to check the loops first because it saves time. If you are dealing with uh, complicated graphs, this can be useful to just concentrate on the uh, pseudograph first, whether this is a pseudograph or this is a simple graph. And you see here, this is a simple graph. Also, we don't see two edges from B to D, for example. All of them, maximum, they have one. Good. Now, this is a undirect, this is uh, not a directed graph. This is an undirected graph. You see, we don't see any arrow here. So, uh, you know that here is just good enough to fill one part of it and the rest will be exactly the same. So, I need to understand what are these values. A to B, B to A doesn't matter. Is it connected or not? It's connected. It is one. So here I should have one too. A to C, do I have any connection? Yes, I have. So these two are one. A to D and D to A, they are the same. Here again, they are connected, so we have one. Good. Now let's go uh, move on to B. B to C. B to C is not connected. This is zero. B to D is connected. This is one. C to D, this is connected. This is one. So the rest, as you can see, this is uh, symmetric. So if this is zero, this is zero. Even without looking at the graph also, I know that. For example, when B and D are connected, so this one is one. Again, for C, and D, it's a connection, so here is one. So this is your adjacent matrix. So for this one also, the same logic you should apply. So we can just get it more complicated. And here, this one is actually very simple anyway. Let's just check. Is it a pseudograph or not? This is not a pseudograph. Is it... Uh, a simple graph, yeah, this is a simple graph because it's not a pseudograph and also from each vertex to another, I see only one, right? So this is also a simple graph. Uh, for my, let me also tell you that for your adjacent metrics, you should be careful. How many of vertices do you have? You have uh, five vertices. so your adjacent matrix should be 5 by 5, not 4 by 4. Okay. For part C, we are dealing with a directed graph, it's obvious. And this, uh, this is a pseudograph, it, it has loops. And this is not a simple graph, it has both loops and also, uh, as you can see, even more than one edge from one vertex to another, even if it had only one of them, I mean, assume that the, uh, the rest were simple. Only A to C, it has two, then you would say this is a multigraph, this is not a simple graph. Okay, so for part C, as I said, for adjacent matrices, first consider how many vertices you have. So first you understand that what's the size of your matrix. So A, B, C, D. Again, here you will have A, B, C, D. So uh, I usually prefer to consider the loops first to save time. Of course, I'm explaining now, so it takes uh, sometimes, it uh, seems like it takes even more time, some redundant steps. But when you want to do it fast, it will save time for sure. In the final exam, I don't suggest you to uh, draw it fast or construct the matrix fast anyway. You have time. Okay, for the loops. A, I can see there is one. The direction for loops doesn't matter because uh, if I, for example, show it this way, you again write it one anyway. So for B, I don't have any loop. For C, I don't have any loop. For D, I have a loop and the direction doesn't matter anyway. 
So for A to B, now this is a directed graph, we should be careful. For the previous one, as soon as I found the connection, then that was good enough for me. So as you can see from the beginning, if I realize this is a directed or undirected graph, it can save time for me. So here, this is a directed graph for item C. So one by one, element by element, you should check. A to B, do I have a connection? Yes. I have one edge, just one. A to C, I have one from A to C, not two, because this direction is different. Okay, so one. A to D, I have one. Okay, good. Let's move on from B. Now I concentrate on B. B to A. I don't have any edge, so it is zero. B to C, I don't have any edge. This is zero. But B to D, I have one, you see? B to D, I have one. Okay. So let's move on to C. C to A, I have one. C to B, I have one. And C to D, I don't have any arrow. So this is zero. Now let's go to take a look at D. D to A, I don't have any arrow. D to B, I have one. D to C, I have one. OK, that's your adjacent matrix. So as you can see, the challenge is concentration because sometimes the graph could be messy. So when that's the case, uh, it can get complicated. Sometimes even I define new vertices, like for example, F, G. Then it can be complicated by just make it messy, you know, different vertices. So the challenge is the concentration to know how to deal with that. I already told you in simple ones, just look at the vertices, what's the size of my metrics. This thing sounds very easy, but when we are dealing with the complicated one, even I make uh, mistakes when I want to rush, for example, to do it or at the same time talking about it. So this is normal, and in the final exam, we should be careful about that. Fortunately, you have time for it. For part D, this is the same logic, so you should uh, deal with it with no problem. Okay, so, so far we dealt with Adjacent matrices. Now let's talk about incident one. For incident one, actually it's easier, uh, but it needs practice so that uh, we know why this is easier. Uh, we should also distinguish this one with adjacent metrics because now we are dealing with vertices and edges inside my metrics. So for my number of column, you see, it's not necessarily equal to my number of vertices. It should be, it is very important to notice because for the adjacent matrix, it's always the same because the number of vertices uh, will appear here and they should be exactly the same. This is square matrix. But for incidence matrices, this is not the case because not always they are the same. And how to deal with them, my suggestion is to deal with it column by column. In the lecture also I explain why this is the case. So when I want to show it on the graph, uh, I should first save how many vertices I have. I have five of them, so V1, V2, V3, V4, and V5. OK. When you have a space, it's even better to even consider the vertices as far as possible from uh, each other, because if you have so many edges, then it won't look so messy. Do you understand what I'm saying? It means that if you have bigger space, like 
for v1 and v2 you have such a space then use v1 here v2 here don't use for example v1 here and v2 here to be too close okay this is my suggestion because you will have a messy graph at the end if that's not the case anyway this is my only space for five vertices so i used these uh, points okay so for uh, as i suggested you for edges consider them column by column and you see for v1 and v4 they are connected for incident matrices i will give you undirected graphs okay so for undirected graphs it's clear that from v1 to v4 there is a connection that's it and that's the reason when i will uh, provide you such matrices always you you can see there are two ones inside one column or uh, there is only one if there is one you see uh, there's a question here what if we don't have two ones in a column it means that we will have a loop i explain it in the lecture okay so if you still don't know how to deal with that i explain it in details in the lecture but if you have to this is very easy you just see which vertices are inside this column just just connect them v1 and v5 that's it v2 and v4 okay next column v2 to v5 v2 to v5 okay and here i have v3 to v5 v3 to v5 is also connected and this one i will have v2 to v3 okay so this is your graph and that's it now you may ask me what if i have the graph and i want to design the incident matrix i want to convert this graph to this matrix so as I told you, I will give you for sure undirected graphs in the final exam. You don't need to worry about the complex ones. So if this is the case, then uh, it's very easy again, because first, if I take a look at this graph, I see that how many vertices I have. This is the same thing you should do. And by the way, uh, let me, before telling you about the vice versa case whenever you are drawing your graph it's important that you label them because we are talking about the incident metrics otherwise your solution won't be com uh, completed so for v1 to v4 this is e1 so label them in the final exam it's also important i almost forgot also to do it so for v1 to v4 v5 v1 to v5 i have e2 so please label them as well what about e3 this is between v2 to v4 this is e3 e4 this is v2 to v5 so this is e4 what about e5 this is 3 to 5 This is E5, and E6, this is V2 to V3. Okay, now this is a complete solution for uh, that question, okay? Now, I was talking about the vice versa case. In vice versa case, uh, you just count the number of vertices so you understand that what you should write here. And for number of columns, you take a look at this uh, graph if it is not labeled you should label it yourself for example name it e1 name it e2 or doesn't matter maybe you name this one e2 then uh, the columns for sure will be uh, changed if uh, the graph is not labeled itself but if it is labeled you should reach a unique incident metrics for that and that's why i say uh, labeling is uh, important but if it's not labeled arbitrary you can label them yourself so you just see how many edges we have we have six of them so you write six of them here the rest is easy 
as soon as you find the connection, then say, for example, for E1, which vertices are connected to each other, V1 and V4. So I understand here I write 1, 1, the rest are 0. If I have a loop, like for example, like this, then for example, this one I call it E7. So for E7, for V4 I have 1, the rest of them are 0. Can I have, for example, E8, all of them are 0? It's meaningless because if it is the case, then there is nothing on the graph. So we don't have a column with all of them zeros. And as I said, we don't have more than two in one column because otherwise you should have more than one edges. And this is another column. I explained it in the lecture. Okay, guys, I think uh, it was enough practice with uh, how to convert from different matrices to graphs and vice versa. If you have any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, I will see you guys on Friday. We will talk about trees.